Hello and welcome everybody, I'm on Proper Bane and this is Crusader Kings 3 and today we're here with Dev Derry number 66, a fresh coat of paint. This one is a bit thinner, this one is a bit shorter, it makes a lot of sense. We've had so much depth, we had so much content in just the last couple of Dev Diaries about culture and Sweden is heading into their customary, you know, uh, summer holidays basically where they, I, I think five or six weeks is what they have off and uh, in that period of course there will be Dev Diaries but they will be very very thin and the Dev Diaries being very very thin makes it so that, well, you know, uh, we're gonna do other stuff on this channel, but also in general. And speaking of other stuff, before we jump into the dev diary, I would like to talk about ModCon, or rather, I would like to show you something. Let's just take a look. And there you go, that was the trailer for Tobson. How come that we have a trailer for one man only? Well, that is because he's truly a one-man show. If you don't know about Tobson, he is the main dev behind the Way of Kings mod, and he is the master of jank, meaning that he's the one that made Doom run in CK3, that made that dungeon crawler run in CK3. He's the one that made Tetris run in CK3. And uh, you may have seen it there. There is going to be dungeon crawling, basically tabletop gameplay, if you will, darkest dungeon-like gameplay, uh, in one of his upcoming sub-mods. I, I think it will be integrated basically into the Way of Kings, but I hope that that will of course also be a bit of a, you know, sort of thing going on that other modders can be using. I am excited because of course Tobson will be in ModCon. He's taking part in a couple of things, but also primarily will have his own segment for the main show announcement. So make sure to tune in. And now with that, let's tune into this dev diary. Now, um, there is a small patch that went out. It's 1.4.4 and a fixed UI list refresh, allowing to uh, access to character allowing to access characters for some interactions when they should not be available. For example, you should you could grant vassal to your leash characters from other realms. Yeah, okay, so uh, that is fixed. If you were using that exploit, then my apologies, it is no longer valid. I did a video on it, it was very exciting, it was very fun, but that is gone. Uh, beginning next week, a majority of the team, as I mentioned, will be going on summer vacation, which means that it'll be mostly deserted for the next weeks. However, the next Death Diaries will be coming, but they won't be as meaty as the ones that came before. Of course, that makes a lot of sense. I hope afterwards that we jump straight into the Royal Court, so straight into 3D stuff. We learned so much about culture, I think it is time that we move on to the more artifacts the titles, the, the 3D uh, uh, actual code interfaces, you know, that sort of stuff is what I'm looking forward to. Now, it's a small dev diary, okay? But believe me when I say that this is a giant, giant step. Uh, when you look at Stellaris, you have a very, very limited uh, subject of colors, or rather a very limited selection of colors that you can actually use for your colors, for your empire and so on. And all of a sudden, we're getting the full palette. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Took okay, you long enough, Paradox. You know, that's where I'm coming from. I'm I'm a huge fan of this. I think this is great. What we have here is, for example, for the culture, if they diverge from Rashput, then as you can see right there, yep, you know, beautiful. You can choose any color that is available. You can go ahead with any of that. And it is not just limited to cultures. You can also actually do it in religions right here. Create a new Muslim faith, for example, would make it so that we can become a completely different color, uh, choosing completely what we want. You know, until now, I think uh, heresies that you created oftentimes had a rather ugly color. I don't want to be too negative about it because I, I think the choices could be worse. But basically, this now works. And then down here, we have the same mechanic for titles, but there are restrictions. Let's talk about this. Especially when that color turns out to be neon pink. So that is something, yep, that happens with custom kingdoms a lot. That happens with the uh, Scandinavian adventurers. That happens with uh, Varangian adventures. All of that stuff makes hideous colors. It happens with populist revolts as well. You can edit the color for any title that you hold or is held by your vassals. Similar to how you are allowed to edit the name and adjective for titles in your realm. Yes, this means that you can make your vassals land sport a cavalcade of color if you so desire. And look at this, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite nice. This looks uh, quite interesting, actually. I really like the different colors that you can give them there. You could, for example, color it in the primary house color of any character that is a vassal of yours. But I will say, um, I hope that when it comes to peasant rebellions, when it comes to Varangian adventures, when it comes to Scandinavian adventurers, that they basically went and said, those aren't going to, ne to be neon anymore. 
I'm I'm honestly not entirely certain. Um, it doesn't sound like they changed anything about that. I, I feel like it would be adequate. Now, you could also say, hey, why can't I just change the color of any realm that exists in the world? And I sort of share that feeling. I, I kind of feel that that is something that I would also like to see. You know, sometimes new realms pop up, they get bad colors. Sometimes I want to mark things in a certain way. But at the same time, I think uh, the reason that this was done, just from me sort of trying to reverse engineer the decision making here, uh, I think the main reason that this was done the way it is, is that if you make this accessible for every single realm, that means in multiplayer, somebody could just ch uh, change a color at any given moment. And of course, that can get rather annoying quickly. Uh, I also will say, and it, it's interesting actually that I have so much criticism <laughs> for such a simple, uh, it's not even a fix, it's an addition, right? But wouldn't it be nice if I could enter a color code here? I mean, just saying, I guess it's not that important, right? You can roughly find it, but if I have something very specific in mind, for example, then I, I have to guess it, right? That's not ideal. Now, the thing about this is what isn't mentioned, and there's one more criticism basically coming. I'm not saying this mechanic is bad, or rather this feature, I think it's a good feature. But I also would like this, but for my hair color. Now in the barbershop, the decision that they basically made in the normal barbershop and who plays with that other than Iron Man folks is that you only have realistic hair colors and they are down here. Now it doesn't look like you can choose many different colors in the barbershop, otherwise they probably would have mentioned it, right? Um, so I would like to see that there as well. I know that they didn't introduce it initially because they said we want you to have an immersive, a realistic sort of experience. But I think the truth is at the end of the day, can't I find my immersive experience myself, right, by just finding the right color that looks good? You know, be it black, for example, be it brown, be it blonde, be it whatever color that you want to choose. Um, I think that would be neat if we get this same system for the barber shop. But I I'll be honest with you at the same time. I think it could always be worse because until now, we didn't even have this in Stellaris where colors are so vital because you get to choose them only when you create your empire. Uh, it just has like, uh, I, I don't know, it's like 16 preset colors, maybe 32. So this is definitely a step up. I like that they are doing this sort of a cleaning, this sort of hygiene feature, you know, where they just bring something in that people have definitely wanted for a while now, for a long, long while. And now it is finally going to be in the game. Again, 1.4.4 ruined the exploit that I show uh, showcased not so long ago, literally I think two days ago or something, right? Uh, or maybe even yesterday, I can't remember. Very disappointing, but also, I mean, fair enough. It was a wild, wild exploit. And with that being said, um, I hope that you tune in for ModCon that starts on Thursday on this channel. The uh, stream reminder, basically, where you can set a reminder will be live rather soon. And uh, yeah, I think that brings us to the end of this video. As always, I would like to thank everybody that is supporting the channel, be it by watching, by commenting, by leaving a like, or by being a member of the channel. Namely, of course, we got the Barons here, we got the Counts, and we got the absolutely beautiful Dukes. Um, I want to let all of you know, in case you're still watching, I hope so, that I am looking forward to the time after ModCon, because I would like to do uh, semi-regular, so what I mean by that is maybe bi-weekly, so every 14 days, I would, I, I would like to have a streamed semi-regular game just with you, dear members, so uh, yeah, let's look forward to that. I'm going to make a post, of course, in the member section whenever we get closer to that. ModCon first needs to be uh, over. It's quite some work. But then afterwards, you know, we're looking towards the future. <sighs> All right, later, alligator.